This is a 1970 Chevelle and this is a 350 with a 250 horsepower motor. So what I want to do today is address this oil pooling right here. Now I have talked to many many people that have worked on cars for years and years and years about this issue and what happens is when the car runs this bolt here and sometimes this one here now this doesn't happen on all of them but it sure happens on enough of them I've been working on these cars I don't know forever the first one I had is a um, 57 Chevy with a 283 same block same intake everything else and sometimes these engines have this oil pooling problem okay so now when if I drive it for a long period of time that'll evaporate and then it comes back so what I did is I checked my reading on my speedometer see and it says 30,000 miles and then I looked at my last tag here 28,000 that's when the last time I changed oil then I looked at my oil pull my dipstick out and I notice it's a little low so and I know that this car has about 4,500 miles on it since I rebuilt the engine so I know it doesn't smoke I know it doesn't use oil I had this oil pooling problem since I rebuilt the engine so what I have to do now is take off these bolts and I'm going to put some blue RTV on the threads what I'm going to do is I have to take the air cleaner the carburetor off so I can get at those bolts also this is the original engine with the car the engine numbers are located on the front of the block over here. so it says C C N I C N I so now if I go and look at my motors Auto repair manual 1970. Of course, I've had this since early 70s because I used to own a Chevelle when I used to go to college. So, here is this is engine identification codes. This is Chevelle and Monte Carlo. So, if you look up here, it says CNI 350 manual transmission, 250 horsepower. 1970 so that that shows that it's an original engine okay so if you go farther so if you look at the general engine specifications and this is here you see 1968 69 and here comes 1970 you'll see this one says This is a 350 V8 two barrel carburetor 250 horsepower. Okay, so um, these these engines I'm talking about would be a V8 283. This is the 302, 307, 327, 350 now these other ones 396 427 that's those are big blocks so they're a totally different engine but what I'm talking about is the uh, small V8s we're gonna start taking these intake bolts off one by one it doesn't really make any difference where you start I'm gonna start right here okay so this is 9 16 counterclockwise take them off OK, 
Okay, here's one. See, it doesn't look bad. It's got a little bit of oil on there. So let me clean this off with a wire brush. The next thing we want to do is set our torque wrench. So we go over here to the motor manual where it says Camaro Chevelle Chevrolet. And it says engine tightening specifications. And what we're looking for is right here, intake manifold foot pounds. So we come down to the column where it has the year and engine. And we get we're looking for 350, here it is. 1969 to 1970 V8 350. We go across to the torquing specifications where it says 30. But it looks like they're all 30. So all the intake manifold bolts for all the engines, which will include 283, 302, 307, 327, 350, even the big blocks, 396, 400, 409, 427, 454. Everybody uses 30 foot pounds on the intake manifold. The next thing is to set the torque wrench. So we want uh, 30 pounds, here's 10, 30, on the sides 20 and 40. So we look for that mark that points down to the center marking here and we slowly turn the torque wrench until, so this one says 20, so we need to go one more mark all the way around one more time and there it is, 0 and 30. So we're all set. It's all tightened down as far as we can, so here's a, our torque wrench. Okay, so since I can't do this, can't torque this bolt, what I'm going to do is go to the next one and see if I can use the torque wrench on that one. And then I will uh, guesstimate how much it is and come back in this one. This is the bolt that is really bad right here. Well, the only one that's bad. And all my years of doing this, it's always this one sometimes this one every once in a while it'll be this one here but hardly ever it's mostly this one tonight so here it is see this one is totally this one is totally soaked with oil. Look at that. Amazing. So let's wipe this off. So I clean this off. The bolt pretty good. Now I'll just run a wire brush just a little bit. Okay, I'll clean it again. Now, once again, a uh, blue RTV gasket maker. This one is Primatex, but it doesn't make any difference. They're all the same. So I just put this on the threads. Now, this will stop the oil from creeping up the threads and causing the oil pooling.
So let's put this one in. I cleaned this whole area off. Yeah. I get it started by hand so I don't cross the threads. And I'll tighten it slightly and then This one allows me to get by. So I have this set for 30 pounds. Okay, click. Okay, so here's the two bolts on this side. See, the forward one is dry. So no oil comes up through here. Let's look at the second wire. this bolt also is dry but I'm gonna put our TV on it anyway and put it back in there so I wire brush it off put some RTV on there so it fills all the threads there's one now I'll do the same for this one Okay, that tightens them up. Now let's see if I can get the torque wrench on here. Okay, on the second bolt, I was able to get the torque wrench on here. Set it to 30. Once it pings, but I know it's got 30 on there. There. So I was able to do it on both of these set it for 30 and torque it down. Alright, so I did the uh, driver side and I also did the passenger side two bolts. This side right here, this is the side that ha is the biggest problem. So, so now they're both, all four are taken off. I put RTV on. Now I just have to put the carburetor back on and we will test it out over the next, I don't know, several weeks or whatever and see if we have pooling here. And most likely we will probably will not. Okay, so I have tried every combination of extensions and sockets and whatever and I still can't uh, be able to torque this bolt because it, it, the manifold interferes. So I'm going to try, I'm going to simulate it. So I know it's a 9 16 and this is not a torque wrench, but I am just going to pull it just so I can get the feel of where 30 pounds is. Then I'll come back over this side and I'll do the, exactly the same thing knowing that it's not accurate. And that's the best I can do. So. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show is what it looks like with this manifold off. I will look at some of my older videos and I will find it where the manifold is taken off so you can see and why we have so much oil activity flying around in the air here. You know, you got to remember, we got oil coming back there's a, a drain here, there's a drain in the back on both sides, plus coming through here, all the, where all the push rods are, there's openings, so that's where the oil would go back inside the center of the engine. 
underneath the manifold. The four arrows indicate where we took the bolts out, put the RTV on. So what happens, the bolts go through the manifold, and they go, they screw into the head, and then they extend into the internal cavity. That what happens is that they are constantly splashed with oil. The oil goes up the threads and causes All right, when this motor gets running, what will happen is the oil will come the oil pump starts pumping. The oil pump is way down in here. It'll start pumping oil and coming through this line through the block and it goes into the valve lifters. Come into the valve lifters, the oil will come up these tubes. It'll come out this little hole to lubricate the rocker arms. Okay, there's the oil be all over here. And then it goes back into the block through this hole and some of these other holes but mainly these two ones. And then what happens, when you look inside the block, you've got these holes here where the, water, the oil goes back into the bottom of the engine, into the oil pan to be pumped back up again. And also, it will go into these holes and that will put oil on this chain. And then there's holes where it goes back into the oil pan.